This is Don Drysdale. There are millions of interesting and unusual stories in the world of sports, and it's a good thing, too, because that's what this program is all about. Some are long enough to take a whole program to describe. Others are interesting tidbits that are too short to fill up a show, but too good to throw away. I call them sports shorts, and today I'm going to share a few with you. This program is a public service of this station on behalf of your local Army recruiter. Today's Army will teach you a lifetime trade that guarantees you of a sound future either in or out of the service. Find out about Army training soon. Now today's excursion into the world of sports shorts. Our first true story is about a famous woman athlete from Missouri named Helen Stevens. She was known as the Missouri Tornado, and she may have been the fastest woman that the world has ever known. She was a tall lady standing six feet high and weighing 155 pounds. She ran in over 100 national and international races, and she never lost one single one. She reached her prime in 1936 when she was 23 years old. There, she set the world's record for the 100-meter sprint, 11 and a half seconds, a record that still stands. With her ability, she could have been the most famous woman athlete in the world. Instead, she's forgotten today because after setting the world's record, she decided, well, there was nothing left to prove, and she retired. Okay, now here's this story. The Australians have had many famous long-distance runners. Did you know they also held the world's record for skipping? Tom Morris, a great athlete, holds the mark. He skipped from Melbourne to Sydney 590 miles. And if you're a stickler for detail, he averaged 800 skips per mile with each skip covering six and a half feet. It took him 28 days to make the trip, which totaled 472,000 skips. Now, there's more to this story. Well, I decided to skip it so we could bring you this reminder from today's Army. It takes more than one person to make a winner, and when I was pitching baseball... I knew there were a lot of people on and off the field backing me up. Well, it's the same in the combat arms of today's Army. Armor, infantry, artillery. Tough young men working together, overcoming a challenge to accomplish the mission. Go with the first team and join the people who've joined the Army. Now back to today's rapid roundup of sports trivia. I call it sports short. Stories too short for one complete show, but too good to forget. The next one I want to share is about the craziest opening day that ever happened to baseball. And where else could it happen? Well, Brooklyn. It was 1912. The Dodgers were playing their arch rivals, the Giants. 20,000 fans were crammed into a tiny stadium that was built to handle no more than 15,000. The mayor was there to throw out the first ball. There were bands and souvenirs everywhere. But the game didn't go very well for the Dodgers, and by the sixth inning, they were being creamed 18-3. to Well, the Brooklyn fans were outraged at the drubbing, and they began to riot. Fruit flew on the field. Fights broke out all over the stadium. Outfielders were attacked as they tried to catch fly balls. Finally, the umpires called the game on account of darkness. Well, since it was only 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that didn't make much sense to the crowd, and the fighting got worse. They attacked the mayor, the police, the ball players, and anyone else that happened to get in their way. The riot squad was finally called in, and 700 baseball fans were hauled off to jail, ending the wildest opening day in baseball history. And finally, here's one last little quickie that I thought you'd enjoy, and with all the talk of strikes by various teams these days, it's good to remember that it's nothing new to baseball. In 1918, an incredible thing happened. The Chicago Cubs were meeting the Boston Red Sox in the World Series. Some smart clubhouse lawyer began fiddling with the attendance figures and decided that there wasn't going to be any money to divide up among the players. So both teams decided not to come out on the field for the fifth game unless they were guaranteed more money. A committee of players met with a baseball commissioner and finally worked out a plan for more money before the fifth and final game was played. It's the first and only sit-down strike in World Series history. This is Don Drysdale, and today's Army is paying more money in salaries than ever before. And you get paid while you're training and learning a new skill. Jobs are open now, so join the people who've joined the Army. Till next time, so long, everyone.